everybody, you are listening to the History Boys. I am Christopher Whedon, and we still don't have Zach, despite us going searching for him. Uh, yeah, he's, he's still missing. He's we, missing. No leads. Uh, we're down here in his bunker, looking yeah. for him there, seeing if he's hiding out. And we're working in but, shifts. Uh, we're, uh, we're, we're working in shifts. <laughs> we're, now we're, we're currently recording the podcast from his bunker, uh, hence the audio. We put Zach back into the uh, History Boys vault for a non-disclosed period of time. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna have him have a big comeback at some point. Yeah, he's like an Animaniacs. Yeah, he's he's a anima- or a Disney movie. A, a Disney. He's a Disney princess. He's like a us. cask of Amontillado. Yeah, yeah. right. Uh, <laughs> we walled him up. <laughs> uh, and yeah. uh, I, I am uh, I am Tyler Armentrout. Uh, I am also uh, a History Boy, and you might have uh, recently saw. My name pop up in the Pandora Papers, uh, uh, big, <laughs> big, big on tax shelters. So yep. that's that's really coming back to bite me in a pretty big way. Um, so you know, so, stay, uh, stay tuned on that. <laughs> <laughs> Got to fund the podcast somehow. Yeah. yeah, and I am Jerry Nash, your humble history boy. As always, thank you so much for listening to our second installment of Spooky Season. Uh, 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 Christ. The fuck, man? We got a black Sing cat right here. Sneaking up on me, Jerry. Yeah, we got a black cat right in front of us as we record, so... Mm. Yeah. That's cool. She's crossing all our paths. Yeah, so good Good luck to us. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know the audio quality, we know the audio quality. I mentioned it last time. <laughs> we knew it was gonna happen. Uh, yeah. We're doing the best We're, I can. We have guys. the exact same shit. Maybe the mics are a little different, but we have... We, the, the exact same stuff, and yeah, it, we just don't know what we're doing, mm-hmm. whereas Zach... When, when we locked Zach in in the History Boys vault, he, we we also locked a wealth of uh, audio uh, recording and post post experience. It was short sighted on our part. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but we got to get a mason in there to take the wall down. Yeah, you got to get a whole. It's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. Got, it's a contractor and. Mm-hmm. And you got to find the right one. You got to make sure that they're, they're not they're, price gouging you. Yeah, they're not gouging you. Licensed and, and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Bonded. Yeah, bonded right. with the state. Yeah. yeah, and on top of that, that wall we walled them up in. It's not up to code. No, God no. <laughs> and uh, we don't need them. We didn't. We also didn't know what we were doing yeah. when we did that. Yeah. So, <laughs> so it's pretty typical. I know how to do one thing, yeah. and that's make uh, dick jokes on a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're the the best damn history comedy podcast that there is mm-hmm. and uh at least <laughs> in my, in fight my opinion it. yeah so well yeah. and speaking of which what are we what are we talking about today jerry what's the spooky topic of the day mm-hmm. ah well today we are doing oh the history of halloween Ooh. Ooh. and i know uh er, pretty much every uh every podcast has to do a, a an episode like this but you know what we got to do the classics, yeah. you know. We got to do. We we got to tell you the classics. We got to show you guys our version. Yeah, you haven't heard the History Boys do it yet. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, so October thirty first is a celebrated day in the West, complete with trick or treating, oh. costume parties, and general debauchery and horror movie marathons. Bobin for apples. <laughs> Apple <laughs> yeah. bobin. Yeah, I love bobin. Now, the history of this favorite holiday and its traditions have deep roots extending beyond recorded history. Cool. Uh, I thought you were going to say beyond the grave. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I tried to do a Wilhelm scream. It was terrible. Yeah, that's hard to replicate, honestly. That's why it's so famous. That's why it's so popular. Yeah. I, I I like the, the, um, the lesser, the lesser used, it's like kind of like the 90s version of the Wilhelm, the, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love that one. Yeah, Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Uh, now, Halloween has changed a lot over the years, including its own name, but it remains a distinctly human celebration. Cool. Ever since humanity has gazed upon the stars, they have celebrated equinoxes and solstices, and the times in between equinoxes and solstices. So, all the time. Yeah. 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 Just celebrating, celebrating time all the time. Yeah, yeah, and every culture across the world celebrates these times in different ways, and they call them different things, but all of them share certain things in common. Like, they all have at least one of these types of celebrations where they feel, it's a, like a commonly held belief among all of them, that the the realms between the living and the dead sort of become closer, mm-hmm. and, and be, it... it 
the the barrier between the two becomes thinner. Yeah, right? I play Grim Fandango. <laughs> well, and the good thing about Halloween is the the barrier between our world and the world of the dead becomes so thin that I can pretty much wear anything and look good. So mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Uh, there's even, and I'm not saying it is sort of directly tied with Halloween or anything like that, but there is, I just thought this was interesting, there's archaeological evidence that uh, even, like, Neanderthals would get together at a certain time for trade and certain amount of what they might consider celebration, mm -hmm. right? It's probably uh, related to the harvest, right? Well... They they were more hunter gatherers, so they oh, they kind of you know they were nomadic. Yeah, they were nomad. Know? Yeah, you're right. They didn't. They didn't. They're nomads. Yeah. Every uh, every costume was sexy caveman. <laughs> Everyone is sexy caveman. Mm -hmm. It'll the have cardio back sexy. Those days, huh? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, so yeah, it goes back long time before before we're even writing anything down about it. It's, it's like almost genetically coded for us to want to get spooky. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And I think the the thing that binds us to Halloween, the sort of idea of harvest and all that stuff, that goes back like 6,000 years. You know what I mean? It's very old. It's one of our oldest traditions mm -hmm. is, is to sort of do this around a certain time, usually around harvest season. You guys heard it here first. Jesus celebrated Halloween. Ooh, big time. <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll get into uh, how certain religions view Halloween as well. Don't Dressed be, as don't the be devil. scared of that ghost. It's just my dad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid of no ghost. I would be fucking terrified if I saw a ghost, I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah, well, I don't believe in them. That's why I'd be scared. That's why I'd be scared. I'm like, well, this is changes my whole world view. Yeah, now I have to believe in ghosts. Mm -hmm. I guess now I, I got to live religious. with that. Yeah, now I guess I have to be religious now. You must mm -hmm. be horrible to watch Ghostbusters with, because you're just like, eh, I don't really buy it. I, it's, uh, <laughs> it's suspension of disbelief. I'm, I'm willing... I, I know what fiction is, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, how, how am I going to get slimed if it doesn't? If the thing that slimes me doesn't exist, it's a yeah. movie. Oh, okay. It's a movie. I'm watching a movie where, in the movie, it predisposes. Okay, this this exists within this realm. Okay, fine. I mean, you don't watch superhero movies. It goes, there's no such thing as an Iron Man. Yeah, you're so like, fuck yeah, it. you can't really get slimed by Spider Man. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I know it's not real. <laughs> <laughs> I went to Disneyland and I met Spider-Man. Oh, well, he slimed you real good. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. You don't. You don't think it was like a, like a twenty-something actor, and he's like, "I'm I'm gonna make it in in Los Angeles by being an actor, mom and dad." No, Jerry, you got to understand. He was dressed like Spider-Man. No, yeah, he, he, was wearing, <laughs> he was he was wearing the outfit, and he just he. He wanted to uh, he wanted to hang out by himself with my wife, and I was like, "Well, <laughs> he paid you a million dollars. Yes, he paid me a million dollars to spend the was evening with my wife." And not only did I think it was Spider Man, I thought it was Robert Redford in a Spider Man costume. <laughs> Robert Redford dressed as Spider Man. <laughs> yeah. So, and, and what you're saying is true. He was an actor, anyway. Yeah, he was an actor, <laughs> just not the twenty something that you said. Yeah, a little older. But depending on the time of year, these, these celebrations are associated with different things. You know, there's one for birth, one for death, harvest, change of season, that mm -hmm. sort of thing. This is called a liminal part of, part of the year, uh, meaning the beginning of, like, a transition, right? Oh, yes. we're, we're going from summer into fall, mm -hmm. right? Fall into winter, that sort of thing. The days are getting shorter now. It's the puberty yeah. of the year. You, you can kind of treat it as a new beginning in a lot mm -hmm. of ways, right? And you sort of celebrate, at least in this time, you celebrate the culling of all of the wheat or whatever mm -hmm. you're growing to feed you for the, for the winter, right? That's what it sort of boils down to, I guess. Now, the ancient Celts, however, oh. is where Halloween itself is most commonly attributed. Cool. Particularly the Irish, Scottish, Welsh, and Manx Celts. Ah, uh, the Isle Manx, of Man. Yes, Manx are from Isle of Man. Good yeah. job, Chris. It was called for them. It's called Sawin. For them, it's, it's I'm Sawin. <laughs> I'm Sawin. <laughs> Spelled Samhain, of mm -hmm. course, uh, but it's pr pronounced Sawin. Or you know, 
e- each little different culture has a different way of pronouncing it. You know, Sawe or Suin or whatever. I'm pretty it sure is. you celebrate that in, uh, at some point in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Oh, nice. I think so. Well, there's also Beltane, which is very similar to Sawin, right. which is May 1st, right? And then there's Midsummer, of course. Mm-hmm. You know, there's. I saw that movie. Their, yeah, their traditions are similar, mm-hmm. and they're celebrating sort of similar things, right? Mm-hmm. Don't tell the missus that that there's an opportunity to celebrate three different Halloweens mm-hmm. out of the year. Because... Well, let, well, you celebrate each equinox and solstice, right? And then you celebrate each midpoint. So there's actually way more of them than Oof. what we know. Like the Easter is technically one of them. You can divide right? it up into 365 if you want. <laughs> so, so in theory, we could take something like really uh, special that we have a lot of childhood memories attached to, and just whore it out until it has no meaning. Don't tell <laughs> Disney. <laughs> yeah, that's what Disney has done, right, guys? Yeah. Mm-hmm. This one is tied to the harvest time. This particular one. For when they were harvesting things of that time of year, right? So we get ba- uh, barley, we get oats, apples, wheat, turnips, that kind of ca- that kind of thing around this time. Pumpkins in North America, not in the British Isles. And they like carve turnips. They did, and yeah. I'll get to that. Oh, I'll get to that. Yeah, and and actually, it's not just turnips; it's kind of whatever you had. A lot uh, of root vegetables. Yeah, if you had yeah. squash. Or, you know, gourds, anything like that. You pretty much carved whatever you had laying around. So pumpkins are native to uh, North America? Yes. Just like corn and tomatoes? Yeah, well, (laughs) yeah, yeah, pretty much. And turkey. Turkey, yeah. You can't really carve a corn, though. No, but you can't. And that's a summer thing. You can carve a turkey. You sure can, in a different way. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Carve a scary face into his tummy toe. Yeah. <laughs> Just wait until after you cook it in the oven. You don't yeah. want to do it while it's alive. No, that, that's a pain in the butt. Be rude let me tell you. To the poor turkey. It would be. It'd be torture. Mm-hmm. Go to jail for that. <laughs> now, one of the most important things about Sawin was the communal bonfires that they ah, would yes. have. You know, if you're in a little community, little village, they'd put a big old bonfire right in the middle of town. I yeah. like that. Burning Man. Right? It, it's a lot like Burning Man, a lot, lot like the idea of Burning Man. People doing drugs and banging. <laughs> People have been doing that all the time. You're not far off, that honestly. That happens everywhere. I mean, witches. Mm-hmm. Witches, a lot of those uh, uh, roots and stuff that r- witches would use in their potions mm-hmm. are hallucin- have hallucinogenic properties. Yeah. You know, like things yeah. like mandrake and, yeah, like mandrake, and yeah. things like that. You and, know, they uh, have hallucinogenic properties. Oh, just mushrooms. It's just got potions on mushrooms. <laughs> it's just a big thing now. Of now decriminalized in uh, <laughs> in Washington State. So ring a ding ding. I thought there was just Oregon. No, we we uh, ah. we we uh, one of our city council members passed uh, like a new thing, and now uh, psilocybin is decriminalized. So that's I'll, good. Is that just King County or? Uh, I think it might. I don't know. I, I was reading on King Five about it, and we should uh, fact check this. Yeah, if, if you got in. if you got some clarifications or some fact checks, History Boys Podcast at Gmail dot com is a great place to uh, send uh, Jerry, tell him why he's wrong about things, and uh, <laughs> and back to the show. There, there's also a lot of uh, misnomers and stuff around Samhain and, and uh, Halloween. Hopefully, we can help to dispel. But yeah, a lot of those roots, those hallucinogenic roots. They, they have those hallucinogenic properties, and the thing is, is you don't have to really ingest them. You can put it on something so it, like, comes in contact with your skin. Mm-hmm. You're and spread this, it on toast. Yeah, and this is actually mm-hmm. where the idea of the witch's broom comes from in, a, in two different ways. And, you know, witches were, you know, it's sort of a female domesticity type of thing that it's associated with. But if you, you know... Let's say you put, like, this hallucinogenic stuff on a broom, then you get high, so you sort of have, like, this idea of, like, flight, right, yeah. on, on a broom, right? So that's sort of where this doing? idea of flying on a broom What are you doing with a broom that it comes in contact with your skin? You touch it with oh, your hands. It. Oh. Or you put it in your pocket. I went away. <laughs> I know you did. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that you cleared that up because before that, I thought that uh, hallucinogenic roots was the most psychedelic project LeVar Burton was ever a part of. <laughs> <laughs> but it was also tradition 
for the coming winter to clean out your hearth, right? Because, mm-hmm. uh, you know, your fireplace, right? Because summer just ended, so it's time to clean out your hearth and, you know, just extinguish your fire. And then what you do is you take a piece of that bonfire. Everyone would take a piece of that bonfire and take it in, in your home with you, and you'd light your new fire with it. So it's like a new, new beginning, you know? Just like, rip it out? Well, it's like, oh, I don't want to clean the oven, so we bought a toaster oven, and I use that <laughs> instead, because the oven doesn't work anymore, because I refuse to clean it. You have one fire, and it 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 does everything for you. Yeah, and a you toaster bu- oven. <laughs> you built this home with your bare hands. It's a toaster oven slash air fryer. <laughs> it's going to get cold during this winter, and Chris is going to be like, well, let's gather around the toaster oven and tell stories of yours. I it turned is. it on high. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is, but my apartment never gets cold i don't the heat's off on the fucking yeah. breaker didn't we didn't we postulate that the neighbor that lives below you just has it cranked up really high all the time i think so so yeah. you're just like ooh, the floors in here are heated yeah I got heated <laughs> floors back then Fair enough you and the community would build your house by hand you know what i mean and mm-hmm. it would take you a couple yeah you know, a couple I'd weeks i'd rather rent <laughs> So you don't want to, you know, rip shit out. Chris would be a religious pariah who, like, lives in a mud hut. And they're like, just... Be called a witch. Yeah. They're like, just let us help you build a house. And you're like, I'd rather rent. (laughs) We don't even know what that means right now. (laughs) You mean the Lord. We give everything to the Lord. You're like... Yeah, like that. Yeah. (laughs) That sounds like a joke. I would be that guy. Then they'd be like, he's a... Then the crops wouldn't come in right, and they'd fucking murder me. Yeah. They'd be like, he did that. For good reason. He doesn't like to be a part of us. I did salt the earth. Yeah. (laughs) I did do that. It was hilarious. (laughs) Then they burned you at the stake. Yeah. And here I am. (laughs) Yeah. Reincarnated. Yeah. All this is true. Salt in my neighbor's little garden. (laughs) They're like, Chris salted the earth, and you're like, you're like, fuck you, Josiah, you dog. Actually, I did. I did. I did salt the earth. I did. You fucking skunk. Yeah, you you fucking skunk. No, yeah. but I did. I did though. Yeah. <laughs> and the ash actually from this big bonfire was used to spread on your fields, uh, because of course it helps the soil, right. you know, and and it sort of it it reinvigorates the soil for the next crop that will be planted. This whole thing sounds like a lot of fun. I bet they got fucked up. <laughs> well, yeah. They definitely did a lot of partying, yeah. for sure. It's because they had to work their asses off all year to <laughs> have a good harvest. Yeah. And uh, when the fire was low, the tradition was is you would run home as fast as you could, and you would say, on your way, you would say, quote, The black sow without a tail, take the hindmost. End quote. I would say the black sow with no tail. Oh, like a, a coward, like the, the you pig... Or coward is uh, the one that's like the last one home, the one in last. Well, My last one at home's all. a rotten egg. Yeah, kind of like that. So, the way I heard it, and the way I interpret it, is, uh, quote, the last one there is sucking hind tit. Right? Because the, mm-hmm. the pig on the end that's sucking the hind tit is like the weak one. It's right? The it's the runt. Right? That's yeah. the way I sort of understand. Growing sense. up in a rural town... I've heard you suck in hind tit. I've never heard that in my entire life. Well, it's it's small town speak, Chris. I've never <laughs> even been in a small town. <laughs> I don't even pass through them. Uh, I'll drive through the desert around them just so I don't have to. Yeah. There was, of course, feasting on on their new uh, crops and whatnot. And of course, you would save them and whatnot for the for the winter. You pickle them. Uh, they would uh, slaughter their weakest cows and whatnot, mm-hmm. the ones that wouldn't survive the you winter. Call the herd. Yeah, the ones that wouldn't survive, you, you'd do all that, and of course there would be dancing and carrying on. Uh, <laughs> sounds <so>. rad. <laughs> yeah. I it sounds pretty dope. Are these pagans? On. Yeah, they're pagans. Fuck yes. Sawin, yeah, they're, they're, they're pagans. And honestly, uh, because the Romans had a tenuous grasp of the British Isles, even though Julius Caesar tried to exterminate all Celts, they they survived on the British Isles. Yeah, they pretty much killed Boudicca and then fucking fucked off. Yeah, it also left them kind of to their devices while the church was kind of gaining a foothold in mainland Europe during that time. Mm-hmm. So it had time to kind of become what it is, right? Word of mouth really yeah. let things catch on. And and the thing is too about Celts is Celts means 
a lot of things. It's mm-hmm. a, it's an umbrella term. It's like saying the Sioux Indians, right? The Sioux are a bunch of yeah. different different tribes, right? That are distinct and we, different. We talked about their that a cultures. bit in our uh, Red, Red Cloud. Red Cloud. Yeah, it's, it's so, several groups of highly litigious Native Americans. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas Celts, yeah, that could mean a lot of different things. They're Celtic. You know, mm-hmm. they share certain language genetics probably. commonalities yeah. yeah and so so when people say like oh Samhain was celebrated by the druids it's like well yeah but also the rest of the Celts mm-hmm. <laughs> you know it's not just the druids okay yeah. not all of them can turn into bears yeah, yeah. And, and the druids you know they did sacrifice animals and, and so did a lot of foods. people uh, yeah uh, during Samhain uh, not necessarily people in fact, there's not a lot of evidence that they sacrificed people on Samhain. Mm-hmm. The know. Romans had their own Halloween-esque thing that sort of merged with it as well. Anyway, but yeah, the Druids would burn people and quote-unquote sacrifice them to freak them out. It mm-hmm. was it was psychological warfare, right. you know what I mean, is what they were doing. They, they were, yeah, really trying to freak out the Romans, and it, and it worked. Uh, but the, the belief that the Druids were sacrificing people on Samhain has sort of come all the way down to modern days as well. I like the idea that the 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 druids were like let's freak out the Romans by uh, by burning some people alive and sacrificing them and the Romans were like let's get out of here and go back to where it's safe and we just crucify people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we line the Albion way with crucified people. Yeah. Yeah. The Albion way, right? I think it's the Albion way. Yeah. Now, playing divination games was also a big part of Samhain. Mm-hmm. So, like, you you do certain things to figure out who you were going to marry. Or, you know, if you're going to have bad luck or not. You know, wh- whoever picks up this part of the walnut shell is, oh, that means something, you know. Is uh, this when they put the pubes in their drink? <laughs> <laughs> no, man, they just no. had a Ouija board. Right, that was midsummer. Yeah. <laughs> they did that in the summertime. Yeah, <laughs> that was summertime. Uh, that's when we, that's when we harvest our pubes. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, because it gets so hot during the summer, you gotta harvest your pubes, and then you make them into a drink to keep your insides warm. It, it made a bit of a comeback. Some of this divinations, like games, mm-hmm. divination games, uh, made a comeback during uh, like the mysticism movement of like the early 1900s, late mm-hmm. 1800s. And then again, in, like a Crowley situation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, because I feel like the uh, the the occult obsession pops up like every thirty years or so, mm. um, especially in like uh, developed like Western society, because it's mm. like the late nineteenth century, then the early twentieth century, then the mid twentieth century, and er- uh, early nineteenth century. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, it does. This idea of talking with the dead or communing with the dead is all sort of divination, right? But. This is sort of divination for the future, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, a, a very popular Celt tradition and this, uh, was bobbing for apples, mm-hmm. right? Oh. In Scotland, actually, they called it duking for apples, which I, like I thought that was more. fucking hilarious. Yeah. I was like, I'm duking for apples, and I can't say it in a Scottish accent. I can't do a good Scottish accent, but... Duking for apples? Yeah. That's yeah. my... Are you sh- duking? Shrek? That was donkey. That was good enough of a Scottish accent that I would have guessed it was Scottish on my first guess. Okay, yes. see? So I'm going to say, that's that's that that's the Turin test, if you will. For <laughs> like, <laughs> like, if I know the accent you're going for, I'll give yeah. it to you. Did it, did it help that I said the word Shrek? No, yes. That, yeah, that Don- donkey. You yeah. said donkey. Yeah, well, I said Shrek. Donkey. Oh, I got that. That's yeah, the only part that. of it that sounded Scottish. Yeah. yeah. Gordon Ramsay is actually Scottish, by the way. Oh. Huh. Huh. Let you know. So is Sean Connery. Yes. Yes, he is. But not uh, Catherine Zeta Jones. No. She's Welsh. She's Welsh. So is Tom Jones. I know. Are they, they're brother and sister. They're brother and sister. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. And Toby, Toby Jones. <laughs> and Toby Jones is also a brother. Yeah. Bobbin for apples or Dukin for apples. Dukin. Is uh, taking him. It sounds yeah, like you're taking a shit. That's why I think. It's funny. Yeah, yeah. It it's, sounds like it's yeah. funny. It's a poop and pee joke. Yeah. I, I like it. It's a. It's a do, yeah, that's what we're apples. here for. Yeah. Sounds like you're pooping for apples. Yeah. It's like whoever has the biggest shit gets, gets an apple. the apple. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, this 
Uh, yeah, this whole podcast is pretty much like if you like history, but if you if you think history doesn't have enough poop jokes, yeah, then you like full history. Of poop, pee, dick jokes, yeah, all that stuff. Yeah. yeah, then this is the show for you. Are you a child? Yeah, up here, <laughs> yeah. Young, I'm putting him and the head. young at heart. Yeah, yeah, and young at brain. Yeah, <laughs> young at brain. <laughs> <laughs> No, this game, Bobbin, Duke, and for Apples, represents, so it is said, ancient sailors traveling to Ireland, the land of the magic apple. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of representative of sort of those sailors on the water. That's why it's on in the water, uh, getting the apple. There's a lot of magic apples in, you know, religion and folklore. Oh, yeah, yeah. Almost oh, like geez. it's an important fruit or mm -hmm. something that anyone can grow or find. Mm-hmm. It's always been a staple. It makes you uh, super smart and rock hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you do get an apple, then you should save it. Okay. Actually, you should save it. Because at the stroke of midnight, <gasps> you could sit in front of a mirror in a room lit only by a candle or by the light of the moon. Mm -hmm. and, what, and what you're supposed to do, and I've heard this a few different ways. A candle if the moon's not out or it's cloudy. Well, then a candle. That's what I said, a candle in, ca it, yeah. in case it's cloudy. Yes. Now I've heard this a couple of different ways, but you sit in front of the in front of the mirror with the mm -hmm. apple, and you brush your hair okay. while you hold the apple. Yeah. And then over your left shoulder will appear the face of someone you're going to marry. Mm. And it's Biggie Smalls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, so you said Biggie Smalls three times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was gonna say it's Tony Todd, the Candy Man. <laughs> oh no. <yeah. laughs> Soon to be Venom, in the video game. Mm. Oh, okay. I, at first, I was like, "Wait, what?" No, in the Sp no. Spider-Man Two video game, okay. Tony Todd's voice in Venom. There's, there's another way that uh, this goes, where you cut it into nine pieces, and you eat one or something. You throw the others over your shoulder. You eat all of them. You throw mm -hmm. one of them over your, over your shoulder, and that's, that's how it happens. And no matter which way you do it, you still see Biggie Smalls in there. <laughs> and then, and then you like, gotta marry him. Who is this man with the? Uh, Darkened face because they didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> they did, yeah. They had no idea. And, and he had some uh, sick rhymes. Sometimes you asked a question, the question would be revealed to you. I've heard it a bunch of different ways. But no matter what, you got to do a bunch of bullshit with an apple. And, and someone uh, with an apple, a mirror. It has to be the stroke of midnight. Yeah. Well, not not staying up till midnight in those days must have been rough. And on top of that, yeah, right. they didn't have like cell phones. You didn't know it was exactly midnight. Yeah, right? How do you know it's exactly midnight you in may, those days? I mean, even back in the day, like, when, when before you had phones that, like, were connected even a to the clock internet. Tower. Let's say a clock tower that tolls at midnight. Well, wouldn't you... What time zone are we talking? Let's say Ireland. Hmm. Couldn't you uh, tell what time it is by the motions of the sky? Uh, maybe they were more attuned with that than I will ever be. You got an orb and a ruler got, and an astrolabe and you Well, do no thing. astrolabe. No astrolabe. I don't know, So you man. got you got a dude that really knows what he's talking about and he's like, hey everyone, it's midnight now. Yeah. And yeah, they're like, this is the guy, this is why we asked this guy about the stars the moon and the sun. Because like, you know how interesting stars are when you don't have, uh, you know, Netflix? Yeah. Oh yeah. You know? Well, and the, that, Incredibly interesting. That yeah. one it's guy. It's all full of stories. Yeah. He's mean That's to difference. everyone, he's a huge piece yeah. of shit, but he knows exactly what time it is at nighttime. His name's <laughs> Clock Clockson, and, <laughs> and they're like, we want to kill him so bad, but we won't know when to throw the apples over our shoulders. <laughs> we do. Yeah. It's the only way you get to talk to Biggie Smalls. Yeah. <laughs> he's just Porky Pigging it, waving his dick around at everybody all the time. <laughs> really into this Porky Pig joke. <laughs> Finds Donald Duck in it all the time. Yeah, Pooh Bear. Audience, just so you know, like Tyler Little makes Disney. A, yeah, Tyler makes a Porky Pig in reference every episode, and we cut most of them. Yeah, yeah. so it seems like it's a lot. You should you should see our cutting room floor. <laughs> it's Some episodes silly. are six or seven. Now, over time, mumming or guising became popular. Mm. Do you guys know what that is? No, I'm gonna no. It's it's. It's a few different things. Uh, it probably just started as small performances, small little skits, or ah. simply jokes. Like a sketch show. Or dances, mm -hmm. or something. But you, Improvisational the, comedy. But yeah, right. right. But the point is, is you would go to someone, and you would perform a little skit, or joke, or dance, or something. You put on a little show, entertainment, and they would give you money or, or mm -hmm. food, right? 
And then there was like costumes involved, where okay. you would dress as something and then perform a thing, and then you would get food or money in exchange, which is sort of like trick or treating, right? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And I get that. I, w- I would hope that these performances were solicited. Um, well, they, they knew they were coming. It okay. was the day. I, it's I not be... like it's not like in the middle of fucking April. That's like ah, oh, they're mumming again. Yeah, you're not yeah. getting trick or treaters <laughs> in April. They come tumbling down the street in their patchwork attire, like doopy doopy doo. Like no. I am the banker and he's the, I don't know, horse smith. I don't know what they yeah, have. Horse smith. Yeah. yeah. Now there's a lot of different legends and stuff that say now this is the first time trick or treating was ever mentioned. But there's guys, there's a bunch of them. There's one where it's like this dead body you gotta carry around mm-hmm. yeah. uh, to different houses until he gets water I and saw that then movie. people die and then they're brought back to life it's a whole thing weekend and honestly and Weekend at Bernie's too that's when they brought him back to life <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I always thought it was weird in Weekend at Bernie's too that they kept on saying trick or treat mm-hmm. yeah I thought it was weird in Weekend of Birdies too, and this is not a lie, that he was not, like, stiff. Rigor mortis had not set in yet. Well, it's because they keep on slinging him around. Mm-hmm. They're keeping <laughs> they his broke joints all loose. of his bones. I'm pretty sure... If you keep sure. moving him, it's fine. <laughs> but you can't stop. <laughs> they were working They're shifts constantly, all night. <laughs> constantly playing him For around. years. <laughs> Those movies... It's a I'm, full-time I, job. I, I'm pretty sure in both of them... Like a uh, a sexed up lady does it with Bernie's corpse, and it's mm. like played for laughs in both movies. Mm. It's really gross. Yeah, yeah. Pre- it did it, not age well. Is it preapism? Is that we mentioned yeah. last episode? Yeah, yeah. The, welcome to the preapism cast, folks. <laughs> we talk about dead boners in like every episode. Oh my god! Happy Halloween! During spook- <laughs> spooky season, we do. <laughs> People having sex with dead bodies. It's gross. Now, fancy dress parties were really only a thing in the early 20th century. There were there were some scattered, because the thing is, is these type of celebrations only came to North America when during the Irish potato famine, famine where Irish people came to mm-hmm. American droves, and that's where we. Otherwise, we probably wouldn't even have Halloween. God, the Irish are great. So what <laughs> I'm you're not saying? Being sarcastic. They just bring, bring us all the best things. I bring us a lot of cool things. I just want to focus on how Jerry uh, is a potato famine apologist because he's like, think about all the good things that the potato famine did for us, like Halloween. He's a a potato famine denier. Yeah, (laughs) no, no, he's an apologist. You know, no, no. Uh, (laughs) Please stop putting words. Potatoes have their reason for doing. I'm saying there's extra history here uh, within North America. What you're saying is the North American context here you're saying is different. It, in a, a, a historical event, it has uh, a lot of ins and outs, a lot, a lot of what have what have you, yeah. a lot of complex, uh, yeah. you know, viewpoints. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. One thing that uh, I, I do think that he's saying is that. Um, it's a yep. good thing to have people immigrate to your country from other countries because they could bring some cool traditions and cool food and cool ideas with them. It yeah. is that is true, and the Irish certainly, certainly did. And I have a lot of Irish in my blood. How many too? But mostly English. <laughs> so there you go. It's a walking you contradiction. Why you want to keep oppressing yourself? Yeah, it's like man, I can't stop. <laughs> uh, Keep wanting to use myself as cannon fodder. <laughs> oh, oh man! Uh, now, in the ninth century, the Catholic Church moved All Saints' Day to, or, or All Hallows' Day, to November first to mm-hmm. try to take the steam out of Samhain, mm-hmm. right? Because that's a pagan holiday. We can't have them doing that, right? I like how they were. It's like releasing your movie on the same weekend. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. like Marvel's like, oh, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna release your little fucking dumbass movie on whatever day. Let me we're, step on it. You're like, yeah, we're gonna release new Spider-Man that day. Yeah, no one's gonna see your fucking movie. <laughs> don't care how good it is. But I don't I'm, care if it is the lighthouse. But I mean, the the Catholic Church is like, like, why would you want to go and party by a giant bonfire and throw apples over your shoulder when you could sit in church an extra time this well, week? Well, the thing is is they kind of change their tone. They're like, hey, the way to Christianize Europe is to take these beliefs, these pagan beliefs, and sort of mm, incorporate them into Christian holidays. 
Yeah. So so it, it's more Christian, right? So that that gets more people on board. They're like, can I keep celebrating? Uh, you know, like Saturnalia. Saturn? Yeah. I'm yeah. Just dead, but they're yeah. like, yeah, but it's also Jesus's birthday. They're like, it is. And he's, they're like, like, no. Yeah. But it is now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Prove to us that yes, it isn't. It is yeah. his birthday. It is now. What a coincidence. Yeah. You know who was the original cool witch? Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, so witch, that's that's a it come, the etymology is weird. But in the Bible, and this is for a lot of you know, why people don't like witches and, and they use this line in the old testament from the Ten Commandments. Uh, or from the Old Testament, uh, thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Yeah. But it's bad etymology. A lot of people think it's actually like whisperer or like like gossip, gossiper. Yeah. Right. So because witches are cool. Well, witches be which, shopping. Which also means. <laughs> which also means wise woman. Ah. Okay. Well, gossips. They know what. They know what. <laughs> But but of course uh, that it also ignores when Moses does a bunch of magic tricks, and it's like, is this what you're talking about? They're like, no, he's a Clearly good. He was a total gossip. Yeah, or or I mean, but all the magic tricks that happen in the Bible, you know, raising someone from the dead—that's not mm. necromancy, right? That's not the act of a witch, right? But not no, because not when Jesus does it. They're using divine magic, not black magic, Jerry. Jesus Christ! <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Then they 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 tried to like reinforce it with All Souls Day on November second, and which kind of turned it into a three day affair. That's October thirty right? first to no, November second. I mean, I think. Well, I mean, we 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 do celebrate. I feel like we do celebrate Halloween over the course of three days, whatever weekend is closest. Totally. <laughs> is that... Well, well, and uh, Day of the Dead actually mm-hmm. should be called Days of the Dead mm-hmm. because they still celebrate it mm-hmm. October 31st through November 2nd, right? And that was an Aztec uh, holiday about really the same thing that Samhain was, mm-hmm. that when the Spanish fucking genocided a bunch of, uh, of the indigenous people there... They were like, we can't have this heretic, heretical uh, shit here, so we have All Souls Day and, and whatnot. So it's not the same as Halloween, the Day of the Dead, but it is akin to it. Yeah. Where we're... There, the point of that is, is more to sort of come to terms with death, sort of reconcile with mm-hmm. death, right? It's a, it's a different holiday, but it comes from the same sort of human Practice. It's a lot more legitimately spooky than Halloween. Well, they get those candy skulls, which are fucking They dope. look delicious, mm-hmm. and they put your name on them. That's cool. It's pretty cool. I'm a big fan of Halloween Horror Nights at uh, Six Flags, because you get chased by a slasher, and you can drink anywhere in the park. <laughs> I don't know what that had to do with the... Uh, you can I'm just drink anywhere you own. want if they don't catch you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> <laughs> just put a flask into Disneyland. They'll see you. Oh, they'll see you. They see everything. (laughs) So, All Hallows Day being November 1st, and by the way, Samhain means end of summer, Mm. and also means November 1st, actually. uh, Beginning of November in in their language, in the Gaelic language. All Hallows Day, you know, was November 1st. All Hallows Eve was October 31st, right? Mm -hmm. So... Later, it just sort of got pushed together and became Halloween. Mm-hmm. And even, like, in the uh, late uh, 19th century, there was an apostrophe between the two E's. So it was like, Halloween. Halloween. Yeah. It's like, like Polly Shore was saying it. Halloween. Oh, yeah. yeah. Buddy. Yeah, wheezing the juice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wheezing on your grundage, buddy. Yeah. Here's Remember the, the 90s? Uh, <laughs> yeah, he made like four movies. Trick or treat. Let's talk about where trick or treat. Let's talk comes about from. trick or treat, guys. Let's talk about. We need to talk about trick or treat all Because that's Halloween, right? That's yeah. Halloween. You guys remember when you reached an age where you weren't allowed to trick or treat anymore? What age was that for you? Fourteen. Uh, Fourteen. I'd probably say around sixteen or seventeen. No I, shit. I feel like you get, you get a couple of years of leeway where you just show up and they go, "Aren't you a little old to be trick or treating?" And you're like smoking a cigarette. When they did that for me. Yeah, so there are places where it's illegal to trick or treat if you're over the age of 13. Uh-huh. 
A lot what? of places consider 12 the cutoff age. What are you in that. for? I, I murdered my too. wife. What are you in for? I trick-or-treated after the age of 13. <laughs> I'm getting the chair no, next week. Hard time. I, I remember. No, no joke. I remember going when I was 13, and me and my friends at this point, we didn't take. You're a little too old for it. Mm-hmm. Jerry Seinfeld was at his bit where it's like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, give me the candy. Yeah, the candy. Yeah, right. um, yeah. But at 13, we just wore bags on our like a paper bag on our yeah, head. Unknown and comic. Cut, and then cut eyes in our, you know, yeah. in the holes, and we were that's. I think we went to like two or three houses, and we're like, ah, fuck this. Yeah. Let's go home and watch the new Monsters movie. <laughs> The new Monsters movie? Yeah. It was, a, it was a made-for-TV movie. Uh, I had a Freddy Cougar mask. I also had a... Uh, I wonder if I actually have the years timed up with that right, because I think I do. I also yeah. had a dark man uh, get-up that I wore a couple Ooh, years. I just I like put on that. a trench coat and bought gauze at the at the, the CVS, and I wrapped my head up. That's actually good. a pretty easy one to do. That's, that's, a, uh, <laughs> that's a good one. And besides the fact that I was taller than the other kids and smoking cigarettes, they were just <laughs> like, yeah, that kid could probably be trick-or-treating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess if you cover your face and you're short. I think I, I think you know what? I, maybe it was fourteen. Maybe it was fourteen. I think I, it might have been. 14. I, I think I, I, I went fourteen. Maybe even fifteen. I, I want to say because I did take my brother and cousin, so I was like, I can still trick or treat. You know. There you go. And I get to take my my son trick or treating, and then I can be like, it's for my son. Isn't he like an adorable Pennywise or whatever? And then I get home and he's not going to know if I take his candy because he's a baby and he has zero control over how much candy I eat of his. Do you take a one-year-old trick-or-treating? I've seen people do it. I've seen people take infants trick-or-treating and they're like, I'm going to eat the candy. I, and they're I, like, it's so cute. I'm so kind of he would have been a month old last time. I'm thinking, yeah, he would have been a month old last time, but I'm thinking if he can walk, he can go trick-or-treating. If not, maybe, I don't know. I, I, I think the idea of really taking him trick-or-treating might be jumping the gun a little bit. We, I mean, I could just buy he's a bag of candy. One, one years old, yeah. Yeah, he's barely one years old. But you can do trick-or-treating at your new house, which is kind of cool. Yeah, live in a neighborhood where trick-or-treating is possible. I'm sure yeah. that they trick-or-treat. They, don't, they, they do trick-or-treat here, but they don't come up to this building. No. I feel like all it's the terrifying. years that I lived in Seattle proper... On like Halloween night, I was always hung over, and I just like close the blinds and lock no, the door yeah. and be like, "Please don't knock Nobody on my door." Our, I mean, plus that old groundskeeper tells him to not go up here. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Herman Munster. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes dead is better. Yeah. <laughs> but check out this dope ass thing you can do with your dead dog <laughs> <laughs> or cat or whatever the fuck it was. Yeah. It's a problematic figure. Yeah, yeah. Soul cakes you may have heard of. Yeah, I have not, but... This was something people would make. There were these little little cakes that were made with allspice, nutmeg, cinnamon, ginger, or any other, like, sweet spices with raisins or currants. And then they would bake them with a cross on it, right? To be like, this, uh, this is sort of like for alms, right? We're giving these away, mm-hmm. right? And this is sort of a part of early Christian Halloween. Mm-hmm. Right, all all Hallow's Eve. This is when they got alms in the mix. Yeah, because you're giving it away. Mm-hmm. I remember when I was uh, playing uh, the first Quest for Glory when I was a child. There was a homeless guy asked for alms, and I was like, "The fuck are alms?" <laughs> yeah, you're like this guy has a very <laughs> casual relationship with almonds. <laughs> I used to think that he he wanted arms. I was like, you want arms? Arms for the poor. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah. What accent was that? Supposed to be? I don't know. Somewhere on the East Coast, probably. <laughs> I was do- I was trying to do like a New Jersey, but that was not. Anything. Yeah. <laughs> Came out a little anything. old Jersey, if you catch my meaning. Yeah, English. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but what people uh, generally did with like food, and you- it was usually fruits and nuts, and that's what they would give out to people too, mm-hmm. other than soul cakes. And to this day, it's actually in the UK. It's fruits and nuts. It's not candy. <laughs> but, I, remember in Loki when uh, Obius asks yeah. him, like, do you have candy on Asgard? He's like, we have fruits and nuts. And he's like, well, that explains a lot. I <laughs> <laughs> really like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you would you would put out food with, like, a glass of wine for the for the spirits, the dead, the dead people to mm-hmm. not fuck with you. Because no one wants the dead spirits... To that are walking them. around to fuck with them. I know if, if I don't want someone to fuck with me, the first thing I do is get them drunk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. I think I've I've bought a beer for a guy uh, who shouldn't have had one at a bar because he was annoying me. Yeah. I was like, here you go. Here you go. 
I go away. And then they get they get kicked out. Yeah. That's how you do it. Children. Oh, no, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Children during this time would uh, uh they, they called it going souling because they're mm. getting soul cakes, right? They said a lot of different things instead of trick or treat. They they would simply say, "Have any nuts or fruit?" <laughs> Eat. Or you, gotta, you guys got any nuts or fruit? Or there was like a sing song thing where they're like, "Any souls for a soul while we're souling" or something. There was a lot of variations on it. Got to pay the troll toll. I'm really glad they finally had that focus group and decided that trick or treat was the way to go. Yeah. Well, and we'll get to why it's trick or treat too. They also used to just say, and I actually kind of like this one. Help the Halloween party. Okay. And they're That's like, not bad. They'd like hold signs too. Help the Halloween party. And I, they'd be like, yeah, they'd give you money or. or, or I feel food. like that's how you get li- like liquor. Oh, yeah, that's how you beer. get booze. Like, yeah. Help the Halloween help party. Help out, man. And somebody's like, hell yeah, hell let's, yeah. Uh, let's get fucked up. <laughs> yeah. So you're saying when you see like a homeless person on the off ramp holding a sign, they're kind of just trick or treating all year round? Well, if it says help the Halloween party, <laughs> yes. That's alms for the poor. <laughs> I fucking almost spit up my beer. Cause, cause what that reminded me of is like Scrooge, and he's like, "You gotta, you gotta carry the spirit of Christmas, uh, all year round." <laughs> and this guy's carrying the spirit of trick or treating all year <laughs> round. That's so fucked up. I mean, oh, he's dressed God. like a hobo. Yeah, he's he's already wearing his costume. Yeah, Jesus he's Christ. Got a top out with the flower coming out the yeah. top. Yeah. yeah, it tops up a bit. It's a, you know, you fingerless gloves. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, everybody's doing the Bartman. <laughs> <laughs> trick, tri- trick or treat came into use around the 1930s, because what happened was, is they would call it either Devil Night or mm. Mischief Night around uh, this time. And <laughs> that's when they kids. showed those movies. Like, remember that they showed movies like that were way rated R on TV late oh, at yeah. night. You know, that's well, not in the 30s. No, I know. Yeah. Clearly. Because it was yeah. in, when I was a kid. But right. that's how I saw uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre yeah. for the first time. And I was like, what? I never heard of it. I, just, yeah. I didn't even know what it was. It was so fucked up. I was like, me, I remember me and my friend were kids. We were like, what is Whoa. this? We yeah. thought it was like, we found this thing that nobody had seen. That's how Outer Limits was for me. Because no other kids had seen it. But it came on every night. If you stayed up late enough. If you stayed up to midnight yeah. on a Sunday which no other kid would do, if, if you did, like, all of a sudden, your TV was taken over by this show, mm-hmm. and it would tell you a weird fucking story, and it was, like, it was all... And then, like, the spell was broken in a lot of ways. So, like, I'd go back to school, and I'd be like, dude, have you seen this, like, Outer Limits thing? No one knew what the fuck I was talking about. So for, like, a long time, like, me and my brother, it was just, like, our show, mm-hmm. where it's like, I don't even know if anyone else has seen this. Because we're kids, it's you know. targeted to you. Oh yeah, and I would like you know. It's only played on your TV. Oh yeah, dude, it, it, it was super cool. Yeah, because we had we we had to turn the TV down because we had a TV in our room. We didn't want anyone to mm. hear the TV on at midnight on a school night. So, but all of a sudden, you know, it'd be like, "Don't fix your TV. We are in control." And it's like, like "Whoa, whoa. <laughs> that's rad." Yeah. <laughs> The, the There's old, a lot of like, magic with TV that. TV shit where you'd find something really strange, like, late yeah, at night. Yeah, I mean, uh, Rocky, Rocky Horror Picture Show, the first time I saw that was the same thing. Yeah. And or, I had no idea what it or was. Or, like, really bizarre public access oh, those shit where it's yeah. like, you'll never even see it again. Mm-hmm. And, like, there's an element of magic, like, spooky magic in, in, in finding the spooky thing that's on TV at midnight. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. I miss that. Oh, me too. There, there was a certain amount of magic there for me. Yeah, yeah. I think that TV by appointment and uh, channel surfing was something that uh, that I, I treasured uh, visiting my parents' house uh, when I was when I was a uh, poor moved out youngster. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I was like, man, there's there's just something about just flipping through the channels and not having anything on, and occasionally you strike gold. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, it, it's in the hunt, not in what you find, yeah. really. Yeah, but sometimes sometimes you, you find some, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Sometimes you find scrambled yeah. pornography and you make it work. Oh, I know. yeah, <laughs> been there. Oh, I remember Spice Channel. In the early 20th century, uh, during these mischief nights, you know, because it was always a sort of a, a a tradition to dress up, you know, in in spooky costumes because mm-hmm. that way the spirits that were out wouldn't recognize you. 
from the other spirits, right? And that's how you were guarded, right? Yeah, from, otherwise from they would things. fuck with you. Otherwise they would fuck with you. Pull down your pants. Uh, and there was babes around. Yeah, and yeah. they all <laughs> laugh at you. Push you into the mud in front of everybody you respect. Yeah. And then you die, but it's Devil's Night, so you come back as the crow a year later. Uh-huh. Yeah, and you exact your revenge. Yeah. Yeah. The crow with it. To a sweet Nine Inch Nails and, like, Smashing pumpkin soundtrack. And, yeah. Yeah. Nah, 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 nah. yeah. So Mischief Night, or oh. Devil's Night, bef- sort of before the 1930s, was where, like, kids would dress up and they would raise hell. They would go out and they were totally unsupervised. And they would straight up start fires, commit acts of vandalism, and it was sort of this night where they ran rampant. Bunch of fuck. It's it's like the purge. Yeah. I, well, and they had to like put they had to stamp this out because like it became a big problem. Like, like just setting hospitals on fire. Oh, <laughs> in, in places like Detroit, New York, like these big metropolitan areas, they would start well, big fires. Well, it's such like, a popular thing that Detroit does it every day now. <laughs> <laughs> one two. And actually, Detroit actually changed the name of it to Angel Night, hoping that it might take some of the steam off. Yeah, yeah now it's exactly. the only night they don't do it. <laughs> They're like, Jesus. guys, when it was Devil's Night, I was all about breaking all the windows in the neighborhood, but now it's Angel's Night, so I think we should all just. Uh, I'm sorry, all the automotive jobs have gone elsewhere. It's not my fault. To to this day, though, people <laughs> still start fires, and acts of vandalism are still made oh, yeah. on Halloween because that's sort of a part of it fires and, and all that is sort of a part of Halloween I had many a fond memories in my youth of, of the TP and the egging of houses mm-hmm. and uh, you know all the mischief mischief oh, yeah. that came with it my house oh, yeah. got TP'd so much <laughs> not even on Halloween like I TP'd your house time. I didn't even know who you were <laughs> it wasn't even, it wasn't I wasn't the target I'll put you put it that way well, what they did is is uh, some of these communities were tired of it, and they started just handing out candy to these kids to not do it. <laughs> and that's where the birth of trick-or-treating came from. Like, don't vandalize your shit, have some candy. And it worked, though. What? It worked, because these kids like candy, turns out. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, I'll take this bribe to not, you know, vandalize your home or whatever. And so, like, then it became, like, trick or treat. Oh. And it's, it's a threat. But... I mean, this goes all the way back. I'd like to imagine these are like, you know, like eight-year-olds starting this fire situation. <laughs> yeah. honestly, I mean, in, in my day, like, you try to give teenagers candy, they're going to be like, ah, fuck you. But they probably weren't teenagers, because in those days, teenagers had to get a factory job. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, so, the eight-year-olds probably working just... Working in the coal mine, going yeah. down, down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'd say we go back to that because uh, my dad was getting real mad at, about how much our house was getting TP. That is I, not yeah. a joke. Put I the kids grew. back in the mines. Yeah, <laughs> the teenage off, yeah. off our streets, back in the mines where they belong. I knew a kid growing up who uh, you could teach him fucking arithmetic. Was kind of lame, and he TP'd his own house so he could like go to school on Monday and be like, "Guys, fucking somebody TP'd my house." I guess. I got an enemy out there. That's and the saddest thing I've ever heard. And then we found out that he, he told somebody, <laughs> yeah, I, I TP'd my own house, and uh, we relentlessly chastised Good. him. Good. Yeah. Because my house did get TP'd all the time because people, because it was most of my sister. They were targeting her. Yeah. yeah. Not me. I yeah. was a nobody. Yeah. I was under a radar sort of guy. Yeah. I mean, it didn't make it okay. I, I, my, I'm not blaming my sister. She was popular. That. Yeah. People liked her. Mm-hmm. You not so much. No, they didn't like me. They didn't know me. <laughs> yeah. I made a point of that. Loved to yeah. hate her. Got to TP that house. No, yeah. that's yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. And then you come, you come to the window, like, hey, stop that! And they're like, is it Michelle? No, no, it's her little brother. Uh, it's not even fun. Our older brother. Or oh wait, yeah, I always think that you're the younger one. Everyone has always thought that. That's weird. I've got a baby face. That's also true. Even with the, uh, you can't call it a beard. It's a, pa- it's, a, it's, it's a patch. It's a patchy bullshit. It's a patchy thing. You it's got a, going. I got patchy bullshit. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, the 1950s, you know, with the baby boom and everything, Halloween was tamed. It was tamed from what it used to be. That sounds like for the best. Yeah, it was for the best. <laughs> but I just want uh, baby boomers to know that it's not just millennials ruining all the good things. Baby boomers also did. By taming Halloween. I'm going to argue Bambi Boomers kind of ruined all the good things, and uh, we're just trying to do our best. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sorry, Bambi Boomers. Well, it's like, well, you used to be able to do all this cool, crazy shit. Yeah, you used to be racist and shit. That was <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, you mentioned Bambi Boomers, and I got heated. I know. I know you did. Now, I can't believe we racist anymore. PC culture. Yeah. 
A, cu- a couple of legends, I, I uh, legends and myths and things like this surrounding Halloween. I just want to touch on. Uh, one is the jack o' lantern. Ooh, gotta love them. The jack o' lantern. This comes from a, a tradition from Ireland, from uh, Samhain. The story of Stingy Jack. Oh. oh. Now, Stingy Jack Not to was... be confused with uh, spring Jack. No. Or Jack the Ripper. No, no, or, no, no. Or uh, Jack Kennedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, not to be confused with any of those. Stingy Jack was a guy who was a drunk and mm-hmm. just sort of a oh. piece of shit <laughs> that wandered around Sounds town. Sounds like a history boy. <laughs> He was. He wandered around town being an asshole to everybody. No one liked him. Slick back hair, oh, white yeah. shorts, white couch, living for New Year's Eve. He was a real <laughs> yeah, piece yeah, of shit. Yeah, yeah. And uh, sloppy steaks. Everyone <laughs> knew he was uh, going to hell, basically. So the devil shows up. The devil's like, "It's your time, dude. It's your time to go to the underworld." He it's, tricks the devil. You and, know, I gotta say, he must have been a pretty special guy for the devil to collect personally. Yeah. Right. That didn't happen much. Right. And, and what happened was, is he goes, look, I can't go to the underworld without having a little bit of a snoot of hooch. You know what I'm saying? So, can Some I can marijuana? I go? Uh, no, go to the bar and get a drink real yeah. quick. Can I get a drink real no, quick snoot before of hooch. a snoot of hooch? I got you. Uh, before we go to the bar, let, let, let's go to the bar before I gotta go to hell. Right. Yeah. Get drunk with the devil. And the devil's like, all right. So the devil goes and gets him all these drinks, right? Gets him good and drunk. cool. And, and uh, Stingy Jack says, hey, you know what you should do? Because we can't pay for this. Because you're from an alternate realm. You don't have any money. You don't I don't have any money. Card. I'm like a homeless man. I have no money. I'm, they call me Stingy Jack for a reason. Yeah. And so uh, he goes, you know what you should do? You, you should transform yourself into a silver coin so I can pay for all these drinks. And the devil's like, that's good thinking, man. <laughs> Is so the, the devil th- drinking, too? Yeah, I, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, the devil's hammered, too. <laughs> They've been drinking all night. Because the story doesn't make a lot of sense it, without it. The devil's like, hey, yeah, I like to wake you too, man. Yeah, uh, yeah. We'll say, yeah. Honestly, Stingy Jack drinks more. Like, he's yeah. out drinking the devil. Oh, he is. He's out drinking the devil. So, the devil transforms himself into a silver coin. Instead of paying for it, he... Puts the coin in his pocket where Shit. there's where there's a crucifix in his oh, pocket and that God. traps the devil. Mm-hmm. And the devil's like, I can't transform, I can't get out of here. And he goes, All right, well, you're gonna give me ten more years of life. And the devil's like, All right, but in ten years I'll be back. So he lets the devil go, and then in ten years, sure enough, the devil shows back up. And he goes, All right, you're coming down with me. And he goes, All right, but. <clears throat> Let's, uh, how about we get an apple first Mm -hmm. out of this tree, right? And the devil's like, sure. And he goes, you go up there and get it. And the devil's like, all right, fine. I don't know. The devil's kind of stupid in this story, I guess. I imagine both, they've been drinking them. This this is the end of a night of drinking again with the devil. Yeah. Yeah. They drink again. Yeah. And they did this. And once the devil climbs up there to get it, and of course, there's a bunch of different ways, different variations of the story. It's a lot of ways to climb up there. But then, while he's up there, Stingy Jack surrounds the tree with a bunch of crucifixes. Oh, I don't know where he gets the crucifixes, but he's, he he surrounds them. And the devil can't come back God out of the damn tree. It. And he's stuck up in the tree. And he goes, alright, what do you want? And he goes, I don't want to ever go to hell. And the devil's like, alright, you're never going Fuck. to hell. I mean, so, not going to heaven. That's a limbo well, situation. Well, well, when Stingy, Stingy Jack eventually does die, mm-hmm. he goes to the pearly gates, and they're like, we can't let your dumbass into fucking heaven. And so he goes down to hell. And the, and the devil's like, dude, I can't let you in here because we made a deal. Devil so, can't make, break his deals. That's Stingy a- Jack was doomed to walk the earth I knew it. with an ember from the fires of hell in a lantern made out of a hollowed out turnip with a face carved in it. And this is the the Jack Lantern. So he became Jack O' Lantern wandering the countryside. Oh, stingy Jack O' Lantern. Up until the Jack O' Lantern part, part, that is, that's Sisyphus. Right. He tricked, Sisyphus tricked Thanatos. Yeah. Twice. Yeah. Because there's a three, right? It, it always comes... Th- the last one is where the it, there's yeah. a sticking point, right? Yeah, no, that that's Sisyphus, and then he had to roll the boulder up mm-hmm. the hill for all eternity. Like, 
That's he's the same. Doomed, he's doomed to walk the, same. the earth. They just with stole from yes. Greek mythology. What is what is he? Shakespeare? <laughs> Whoever wrote that? <laughs> <laughs> well, and Shakespeare, of course, perpetuated the uh, the witch. You know, mm-hmm. uh, fire burn and cauldron bubble from Hamlet, right? Or no, Macbeth. 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 Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that whole thing, you know, uh, sort of perpetuated this. And by the way, in the 19th century, witches were portrayed as Lee hags with a wart on their nose. It wasn't until the 20th century where witches became more attractive. Wasn't, um, isn't Hecate literally in Macbeth? I think there's just the witches. Hold on. I'm, I'm all about these, uh... Yep. She appears briefly to scold them for dealing with Macbeth without her say-so. Ah, oh, the witches. I remember that. No, Hecate's in it. Okay. I don't know if they pronounce it that way. They would probably say Hecate or something. Well, old English. I say know. Hecate. Yeah. Old English, 800. I don't even know if that's how you pronounce it. Hecate. Yeah. Hecate. That's, that's how you pronounce it now. Hecate sounds the least stupid. <laughs> Fair enough. I'll, so people, you know, of course, carve turnips. And like what I said, it's not just turnips. It's not just pumpkins. It was whatever they had lying around that you could carve. And put a candle vegetables. in. Carving Any out those. potato. Carving out the yeah, inside potatoes. of a turnip where a potato sounds like bullshit. Clearly, gourds are the best option. Gourd, yeah. A, a gourd, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Root vegetables are hard on the inside. Yeah. A gourd, it, like a spaghetti squash? Come yeah. on. Come on, yeah. dude. Yeah, that's they eat all the. Eat, oh, and then you. Oh, you can make it like a vegan spaghetti. Yeah. yeah. Or a, like a. Spaghetti squash is delicious. It's so good. It's so good. Or, or you could. Uh, you ever have a delicata? What's a delicata? Delicata, yeah. Oh, What's man. a delicata with you? <laughs> what you do is you know. cook it. The the end, it's kind of long, you yeah, know, yellow, yeah. and uh, you, you you slice it, you slice it up, Ooh. and you can uh, you cook it like that. It's very good. Well, I've I've definitely had squash that's sliced instead mm-hmm. of you know. Well, you can also do the brown sugar and an acorn squash. Oh yeah, Ooh. oh yeah, that's good. Gord, uh, help me. We like, have, we uh, have a listener that had that from their garden had some very strange looking squashes. Just that's one thing you're missing on our Discord. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. At the one dollar Patreon level, you can get on the Discord and see one of our Patreon pals' excessive collection of bizarre things they grow in their garden. Yeah. Yes. So somehow they got these bizarre-looking squashes, like no other squashes I've ever seen. Honestly, they're big boys. They're units. Yeah. Yeah. Then there's also this idea of. Poison candy. Is <sighs> this in the 90s? Well, 80s, 70s. Uh, uh, actually, sexy costumes came into popularity in the 1970s. That makes sense. But yeah, it, ca- it came along with... Uh, sort Sexiness of this... was invented in the 1970s. <laughs> yeah, the, the first sexy costume uh, for, for 70s Halloween was uh, Sexy Bush. It's like just Bush? Yeah, it was just it was just a nude woman. Mm-hmm. Sexy I Bush, get it? Get, get it? Cause I the, thought it was like Lady Bird Johnson. No, I was because I, I was making a pubic hair I reference. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. Yeah, because you don't know, harvest your pubic hair until midsummer. Yeah. Well, okay. We've been right. over this. Yeah, and then you put it in your tea or something, mm-hmm. whatever yeah. it is, and it shows you uh, whether or not you're gonna live to ninety or something. Uh, <laughs> I'm referencing the movie Midsummer. Yeah. You ever seen that? I have seen that. It's good. It is good. No, of course, there was the uh, cyanide candy killer. This is the only confirmed case where somebody was actually poisoned with Halloween candy. Wait, somebody actually was? Somebody was. I thought that was uh, total bullshit. There was one instance. Mm. Uh, there, there was a guy that, I won't even say his name, dude. You've, you've heard the story. You can look it up. It's easily accessible. But there was this guy. They were going on trick-or-treat in the neighborhood. And he took out this life insurance policy on his kid, even though he his house was in for, foreclosure. That's how kind of the cops caught him. They're like, "How did you pay the life insurance bill and not your fucking yeah. your mortgage?" Right? And turns out he wanted the life life insurance payoff. So what he did was laced pixie sticks that he gave both of his children, by the way, Ugh. with cyanide, and th- he just put a staple in the top of it. Right, mm-hmm. and gave it to his kid, and his uh, his one son threw up his uh, guts basically and died at the hospital. They the cops it was super stupid because the cops like canvassed the area, and the only house given out pixie sticks was his house, and it's mm-hmm. like so you did it. So it's his own son that that he did it to. It's the only confirmed case. They call him like the man who killed Halloween, and then of course there's hoaxes where. 
there's razor blades and, and Reese's peanut butter cups yeah. and stuff like that. They're almost always hoaxes, right? So there's always some guy that reports to the news, like, I found a razor blade in a Halloween candy thing. And you know what? When you do that and they find out it's a hoax because it always is, you go to jail, my friend. And the thing is, is the cops have to take that shit seriously. So sometimes in certain communities, they have to cancel trick-or-treating because some idiot hoaxed that there was actually razor blades going around. It goes and that nuts. person goes to jail where they fucking belong because they're ruining fucking trick-or-treating and Halloweening, Halloween for everybody. Yeah. I like also, trick-or-treating. Yeah. I like Halloweening. And it just goes to show you that, A, if you get poisoned by candy, it's probably somebody in your own home poisoning mm-hmm. you. And two, I don't know. Razor blades and candy are stupid. Don't do it. Don't. We don't have to. We do. Do we have to say this here on the show that it's a bad well, idea? Well, the thing is, is the the argument that there's a nefarious neighbor that you don't know that is coming from from nowhere, right? Is is giving your kids, you know, razor blades and the candy mm-hmm. has never been proven, not once. I'm there's no worried. evidence for that. I would say the one dude just killed his kid. He did. Yeah. What about the guy who like gives you like fruit that person's weird yeah. because they know that in this day and age your parents have to check your candy because you do have to take it seriously but you're just ruining halloween for everybody when when you hoax these things don't tell the news that you you found a fucking don't do that we had guys. one house growing up that uh i think the family that lived there the dad was a dentist and he would give uh, the little, the little like single use, you know, the little shitty toothbrushes you always get when uh, you go to the dentist. Uh, They're not like toothbrushes you're going to use very often. He's, trying, he's, teeny he's trying to advertise his fucking dental. Yeah. Uh, I know, right? Yeah, there's a okay, business thanks. card in there. Trying to hijack Halloween with fucking dental health. What a but it had a shit. fucking name on those little toothbrushes. There's always some local news station that's like, the the myth is real, guys. We actually found one, and then they post pictures, and like the candy is all fucked up, and they're like. This is how we found it, and it's like bull you put that there. shit. You put it there because you wanted fucking attention, and I'm glad you're going to jail, because, man, otherwise, like the cops have to do Halloween, <laughs> and the cops have to prove to everyone that there's no razor blades in it by like putting it in an MRI scanner or whatever. It's the lamest fucking thing ever. <laughs> this Snickers bar does not have any razor blades, but it does have stage four cancer. <laughs> <laughs> there's a bunch of other myths, you know that there's gang initiations on this night and it is an amplified time where, where gangs will just kill you if, if something if something particular yeah. happens. And but there's always these rumors. This year also round. sounds like I mean it's the same shit where it's like oh how how are we gonna scare people? The gangs were a big thing in the eighties yeah. and nineties. Gang violence happens year round, folks. Yeah, there's a gang yeah. and they listen to Judas Priest and play Dungeons and Dragons and Doom all night. Yeah. You're like, that gang sounds freaking rad. Well, and this kind of <laughs> shit happened a lot during the Satanic Panic of the oh, 80s and 90s. Oh, of course it did. So we definitely, as kids, saw a lot of this stuff where it's like the Satanists are trying to get your kids hooked on LSD. Do you ever think? And I got news. For, I got news for you, folks. If you paid for LSD or heroin or cocaine or even edibles, like weed edibles. You're not fucking handing those out. Those are so fucking expensive. Yep. No one's handing your kids drugs, dude. That's expensive. Yeah. No one's giving away drugs for free. Do you ever think so, that? Uh, do you ever think the Satanic Panic in the '80s and '90s uh, raised an entire generation of people who don't trust the church once they realized all that was bullshit? I hope so. It does seem that way. I hope so. I know it raised at least one kid who thinks. Uh, the satanic stuff is pretty cool. It's rad. That's me. It's mm-hmm. badass. And me too. And you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Growing up in a small town, there's religious people all around. And even people that you think are immune, they'll be like, hey, uh, watch out. If somebody blinks their uh, headlights at you, that's gang initiation. You're not supposed to blink back or no. change or whatever because uh, they'll come and kill you. So I, I had a member of my family tell me that verbatim. There's no gangs in fucking Emmett, Idaho. Yeah, no, no, there's not. Or Boise, Idaho, for God's sakes. Or Woodenville, Washington. Yeah. <laughs> like, there might be a gang, but it's but it's not... It, it's not trying to, like, fuck with you. They're trying to make money because they're a marginalized people in, in this society. They're, they're, it's, they're it's, selling drugs is what they're doing. Uh, yeah. I, I thought you meant, that, like, if there was a gang out there, it was probably just the 4-H, and they were <laughs> flashing their brights at you to be like, hey, your headlights aren't on. Yeah. No, the, trying to look out. Yeah. Yeah. Don't fuck with the 4-H, man. They, they, uh, 
They're serious. They people. know how to slaughter a pig. Yeah. And they yeah. raise it from birth. Yeah. Like They're not afraid to sleep. Cold hearted. <laughs> Yeah, and feed you to pigs. Yeah, you know. Then there's also this thing about um, it's called the like the blue star myth, right? I haven't heard this one. Okay, so this is a good one. Another one of those things where there was like these poorly printed photocopy things, like posted at elementary schools and stuff, mm. where like people would hand out the, like the the crux of it is that people would hand out these temporary tattoos, right? That you'd stick on, mm -hmm. but they were laced. With LSD. Ooh. So there would be popular cartoon characters yeah. like Scooby Doo and Mickey Mouse, and the, for some reason, the blue star of the Cowboys football team. Ugh. And if, if people had them, then it's like, oh my goodness, you are on LSD and you I are perpetuating. I do remember that. Yeah, you're perpetuating like, oh, this you LSD. You can't do the. My goodness. Like you're uh, there, there's apparently a group of gang members out there who want nothing more than to expand the minds of children. Yeah. <laughs> what a bunch of monsters. Ken Kesey and his merry pranksters. Yeah, it's like a scene when he's on. Yeah. yeah. So the, the merry pranksters never really did die. No. They lived on. Speaking yeah. in sp temporary tattoos. <laughs> Somehow they got them printed in a fucking factory in China with LSD in them. Come on, man. Think of the logistics that would have to go into I mean, this. And if any drug, like, that kid's just going to be hella groovy. For, know? like, two days. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to be like, man, i seen the eye of the needle, man. All you got to do is open up, <laughs> you open up a red bubble store and you make sure to do the temporary tattoos with LSD. There's, 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 a, a, there's a drop down yeah, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, and a box. You, you can absolutely in the 90s. Yeah. You can absolutely include illegal drugs in your temporary tattoos. That was the thing of the 80s and 90s. Yeah. You could totally do that. Regulations were just different back then, man. Yeah, man. The Reagan era, <laughs> you know, <laughs> they took away all those regulations. Yeah, there's all these uh, things that just sort of uh, help ruin ha Halloween for a lot of people and stop perpetuating those. Uh, the thing is, is uh, we were raised by uh, people that said, don't trust everything you read on the internet, and then all of a sudden they start trusting everything they <laughs> read on the internet. Uh, please, uh, do. Uh, you're in front of a goddamn computer. Google it. Fucking make sense of it because all you're doing is ruining it for the for the kids that actually have fun. It's mm -hmm. bullshit. Jesus I'm waiting Christ. for one month later where this Halloween is the one where like all the candy gets poisoned and <laughs> and everyone's like, Hey Jerry, foot and mouth and you're yeah. like, I guess. It was like a it was like a attack by the Chinese. <laughs> like the Chinese were like, We will get them finally. <laughs> by the uh, COVID thing. It wasn't like, enough. Yeah. I guess like a quarter of <laughs> all candy sales in the United States occur. For Halloween. Oh, I'm no doubt. It's like it's no like a, it's like an almost a nine billion most retail, dollar like uh, Christmas uh, for a lot of retail places. The same well, way. Well, Chris, Christmas is number one, but Halloween is number two. Well, for candy. Tell me well, another time. Of, yeah. it, it's the most. It's the second most lucrative holiday mm. out of any holidays. It's the second most, uh, just behind Christmas. Like, what other time of year do you go to the grocery store and walk out with like? Bags, bags of candy, and you know a jar of peanut butter and a couple of joints, and you're like, it's Halloween, I guess. Yeah, or regular Tuesday. Like, bring all that in. <laughs> <movie theater>. Yeah, <laughs> paying their that, that's movie theater stuff, right? The movie theater <laughs> supplies, yeah. Jays, and a shit ton of candy. <laughs> uh, remember movie theaters? Gonna watch the new Marvel movie. Now, of course, there are Halloween's haters. Ugh. Now, during the research Boo. of this episode, Boo. they're the worst, man. I came across multiple quote-unquote documentaries where people were trying to prove that Halloween was not only a holiday for and by Satanists. Mm -hmm. Which makes it awesome. And man. when I say Satanists, it, what they mean... People worship the devil. Is they devil worshippers. The devil exists and they worship him. Yes. As uh, a god. Satanists, mm -hmm. I do want to draw this line in the sand, Satanists do not believe in God or the devil. Mm -hmm. And it's a completely different thing. It's a political movement to show you 
the other side of basically the separation of church and state. Oh, absolutely. If it's okay for Christianity, then it should be okay for well, that's, Satanism. That's exactly and what that is the point. The, sa- the satanic temple, who are great. Absolutely. That's exactly They what prove doing. this, mm-hmm. yeah, by building the Baphomet and all these things. I but have a statue of it in my house. Yeah. But, but I have a t-shirt. The, the thing is, is uh, they're like, well, the crux of Halloween goes back to, to Samhain which is a pagan festival that worships darkness and death. And, of course, the Bible and God and Jesus are the antithesis of darkness and death because Jesus himself says, I am the light. I'm the light of the world. A lot like uh, Ra, or Ray, by the way, in Egyptian mm-hmm. mythology. Uh, he Everybody said the loves same Raymond. thing. Right? Yeah. <laughs> There's plag- plagiarism. Everybody loves Ra. On. Yeah. Maybe going on. They're That'd like, well, well, why should you celebrate death in darkness? Why is that such a good thing? And it's like, well, maybe it's because death and darkness are certainties, and we're trying to come to terms and maybe make fun and, and make light of these things, right? So that's what it's all about, right? Sounds like but, you're describing our podcast. Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> they'll stand there and they'll tell you that it's from Satan and there's all, all these... All this, uh, uh, unfounded uh, imagery that goes along with it, you know, the devil and stuff, which didn't come along until much later. Even even the first depiction of the devil in association with Halloween was actually a blue devil, by the way, and was made red much later on. Mm-hmm. So all of this is human created. It's not. It's not. Nothing about it is divine. Mm-hmm. Nothing about it is from the Bible or. From the heavens. I'd like to think that devil was blue raspberry. <laughs> yeah, but he's delicious. Ooh, ooh, bueno. Yeah. I would love to live deliciously. Yeah. Nice. And there's yeah. no more delicious than blue devil ice pops. Yeah. <laughs> Sold at Duke uh, University. In your <laughs> ice pops. <laughs> <section>. <laughs> Actually, I do want to mention part of my Halloween sort of repertoire, listening er, and watching stuff. A staple for me is the King of the Hill Halloween episode, Halloween. Oh. And there's actually a lady that's like, Halloween's for the devil. And it's actually <laughs> Sally Field who's doing the voice. But it's really good. I, I watched it last night. Where do you watch reruns of King of the Hill? Hulu. Okay. Hulu. And if you like Hulu and you want to sign up for free... Type in the access code. Uh, Dude, I wish we had a fucking promo code. Oh, man, I wish. I wish they'd sponsor us. Hulu! Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Give us money! Uh, We're already so, sell- we talk a lot about what we do in the show. Yeah. But, but basically, the reason why people believe believe that this is a satanic holiday is because... Satan rules and Halloween rules. Yeah, well, you're right, Chris. But Class dismissed. <laughs> <laughs> In the 17th century, Mm -hmm. there was a writer that saw Samhain, the persisting things in the British Isles. He was like, And he was like, they're sacrificing humans over there. (laughs) It's done, Nas. It's sort of, yeah, (laughs) exactly, yeah. I don't know, Andy. He wrote about it, and that's where all this comes from. All the cherry-picking from the Bible and stuff like that. That's all 17th century stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't believe in ghosts or anything supernatural. There's nothing to be afraid of. It, oh, it, there's plenty to be afraid of, but nothing supernatural. Uh, well, there, I would be more afraid of anyone telling you not to celebrate Halloween versus people who do celebrate Halloween. Yeah. I'd be more afraid. Logical threats. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The only day of the year that I'm not scared and full of anxiety is, in fact, Halloween. Yeah, yeah. You should be scared. But but They're what coming it, for you. what it really boils down to is that the the ancient Celt version of the afterlife was then morphed and viewed by the Christians as the Christian hell. Mm-hmm. Right. So there was the Roman afterlife, which was you know the River Styx and mm-hmm. whatnot. And that's the whole thing. They don't have anything else. They don't have a heaven yeah. or hell. They have that, right? Yeah, they have the they, underworld. They right? took that from the Greeks. Right, exactly. So the Celts sort of had a, a similar thing. The fact that the Christians had this sort of detachedness with the Celts, when, when they viewed their underworld, they were like, well, that is hell. That's hell. So their version of the underworld became the Christian hell. Yeah, there's and only anything two places. Con- yeah, and anything well, conne- connected with that became sort of this whole thing. So, this is not a, a celebration of hell. This is coming to terms with death, making light of death, and it's always important to sort of make it, make to make light of your certain destiny, 
mm-hmm. which comes for us all, which is death. And that's okay to sort of make light of it every once in a while. And don't forget it's about eating candy and dressing up as a spooky or sexy thing, whatever you want to dress up as. It's, that's that mm-hmm. You do you. And I'm not putting down anyone's costumes, by the way. If you want to be a sexy nurse, go for it. If you want to be fucking the Joker, go for it. If you want to be Harley Quinn, go, go for, for it. it. Yeah. I don't care who you are, go for it. Uh, one of our- I like Halloween, how we went for God's sake. Sexy nurse, Joker, then combined them, Harley Quinn. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking of the time our uh, friend, our male friend, I don't know. He's not a male man. I mean, man. No, no. Man, he's a man. He's a man. Assigned yeah. male at birth and identifies as. Yes. Uh, and he was, he was, Quinn yeah. Once for Halloween and it he was Chal- Yeah, challenging it, all of our, uh, our preconceived notions yeah. of our, our sexuality. Yeah, it, it was one of the most amazing costumes I think I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah, the, uh, it was the, it, and it was specifically the, uh, the suicide, suicide, the suicide one, one, the daddy one. little monster with the sh- short yeah. shorts. Yeah, the, uh, 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 what's her name one? Uh, uh Margot Robbie. My, Margot Robbie. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was specifically that one, yeah. I, I know that we do have a Saturday release on October 30th, and maybe this episode would have fit a little bit better on that day. But, gentlemen, and dear listener, I want you to know that I have some really dope-ass shit planned for you, and I just wanted to get this out of the way, because I just need a little bit more time during this very busy month for me to crank out some really quality shit for you. Not to say that this forward. isn't quality. No. This is high quality, and we got one a week all October coming at yeah. you. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so we're going to be keeping things just spooky like all year. month long. Yeah. We're uh, just like going to try to make this a thing. I yeah. can't promise for next year, because society might crumble. Yeah, it might be the actual apocalypse. Who we knows? might just be One ranting hopes. at each other in a... Maybe Satan is real and will rise from hell and to battle the forces of heaven. And, and uh, hey, count me as a believer if yeah. that does happen. <laughs> yeah. Don't you know that... Guys, don't you know there ain't no devil? That's just God when he's drunk. Nice. nice. Tom, Tom Waits. Tom Waits reference right there. You know I love Tom Waits. Yes, indeed. Tom uh, Waits. I actually no dressed as him for Halloween once. I and you dressed as Nick, Nick Cave. Nick Cave, yeah, that was that was a good uh, sort of unplanned. Gr- was it planned? It was a planned. No, we we well, I think we both kind of want to do it. We're like, oh, it's perfect. Yeah, I'll be yeah, Tom Waits, be Nick Cave. I don't know how yeah. great the costumes were, but they were great. It was, it was fun. fun. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, we have pictures. We should we should put them on the Discord. Ah, we can do that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, once dressed as uh, T. Mitch. Yeah, yeah, that was good. Tyler Tyler dressed as me. Yeah, I dressed as That was really good. I remember walking in. I was dressed as Cher. Yeah. And Susie was dressed as As Sonny Sonny Bono, which was fantastic. Former mayor of Palm Springs, California. Yes, indeed. Died in a horrible skiing accident. Also Republican. Uh, Uh, Well, fuck him, then. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad he's dead. Weren't kind to their their trans uh, child, by the way. They They have a trans child? Chaz Bono. I, just, I, I don't know. Yeah, I'm yeah. shit, dude. Anyway. Chris doesn't keep up with the comings and goings of the Bono family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. So I do one, one thing I uh, we want to start this episode. We didn't do it last time. Maybe we can make up for it last time. But we want to mention movie recommendations to you for Spooky Season. We're going to scare mm-hmm. the shit out of you by proxy. Indeed. Tyler, uh, give us two, because we missed last time. Give us two. Two movies you think... People should watch during spooky season this year. Well, probably the the two that are on my mind uh, this year. I've been I've been thinking a lot about uh, Nightmare on Elm Street three. Nice. And uh, and and I believe that is the Dream Warriors. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's and, a it's prime time bitch. Yeah, right? that's yeah, that's. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, I've yeah. seen four. I haven't seen three. Four is really bad. Is really bad. They got that scene with the karate guy when yeah. he's fighting the invisible. Freddy Krueger. Let's just be yeah. clear that they made they ran five out. Nightmare on Elm Street movies between, I think, 1985 and 1990. So, yeah. so they were really cranking them <laughs> out. Well, it's New Line Cinema, yeah. right? I, you know what? I'm just going to say that. Freddy Krueger built New Line Cinema. Right. I'm yeah. going to say this uh, I, on the podcast. I don't give a shit. The dude who was the karate dude in that, I know somebody who dated him. Whoa. Yeah, I'm not saying I didn't who it know is. that. Yeah. All right. But yes. But either way, I will be watching Nightmare on Elm Street 3. And then, you know, I might just do uh, Brian De Palma Carey. It's Ooh, uh, that's ooh, a good classic, one. my friend. I like Carrie too. I like when she rage. burns them all. <laughs> yeah. My favorite part in that joking. movie is when the kid rides by Sissy Spacek and he goes, "Crazy Carrie, Crazy Carrie," and she goes, "Wing!" and like hits him with her psychic powers. And he, and he wrecks on those bicycles. Yeah, and he goes like face over handlebars. Well, but Mama, I love him. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. They're all gonna laugh. 
They're all going to laugh at you, Chris, Gary. what are your spooky movie uh, records? You know, I have two, yeah. uh, as I guess that's what we're going to do. Yeah. Uh, number one is The Witch, Robert Eggers. Yes. Um, so good. Very I'm good a one. huge fan of The Witch. I love Robert Eggers' movies. Mm. Uh, we already know that you like I, The Lighthouse. I brought The Lighthouse like, up quite a bit. so many times. And, and you Lighthouse. quoted The Witch earlier in this episode. I did. I did reference, yes. yes. Uh, yes would thou like to live deliciously, or whatever the fuck yeah. it was. Yes. Uh, the Witch is great. Uh, on your Taylor Joy. My uh, goodness. Yeah, in her breakout role. The dad is played by Ralph Ennison, who I love. He's in a ton of stuff. He was in mm. um, Gunflower, Gunpowder Milkshake recently, oh, which yeah. is... I never saw that. Interesting. He plays the the titular Green Knight Ooh. in The Green Knight, a movie Ooh, I, I really, not really loved. Yeah. Is he like A24 will... royalty? <laughs> yeah, A24. He's like... Yeah. He's like a... Uh, uh, Central casting for A24. Yeah, that's cool. I like A24. <laughs> oh, me too. Me too. Um, yeah, big time. My second one is not The, the Green Knight, uh, but <laughs> do watch that. I loved it. Uh, my second one is The Nightmare Before Christmas. All right. I watched that movie in the theater, this and is it's, Halloween. I know all the songs by heart. Every year, and even sometimes in the summer and shit, I sing Oogie Boogie song at karaoke, and I fucking kill it. He does. I he do brings the, the house down, people, ladies and gentlemen. People can't believe that voice can come out of me, but it does. I fucking kill it. I am good at that song, and I cannot wait to go to karaoke next time and fucking sing that. However, in my recommendation, if you've seen it a hundred times... Watch it in Japanese. Ooh. Because... Japanese voice cast does a killer job. The songs aren't as great, but Jack Skellington in Japanese just sounds right. You know? Yeah, yeah. And I learned that from Tyler after he went to uh, I went Tokyo to, Disney. I went to Tokyo Disney during Halloween, and they had the uh, Nightmare Before Christmas overlay on Haunted Mansion, and I, I came back with that information and shared it with Chris because oh, I knew his love of the film. He told me that, and I was immediately like, no, that feels right. Yeah. yeah. For me... I got I got a couple of international films. Fancy. So my first one I will give you is one that is constantly overlooked, criminally underrated, criminally underrated. It's called Possession, mm. the 1981 film by Andrew Z Andrzej Zulowski. Excuse me, a Polish film director. Uh, although very few of his films are actually made in Poland, this is made in France. But he's Polish. He is Polish. Uh, this has, uh, yeah, this has the uh, incomparable uh, Isabel Adjani mm -hmm. as well as Sam Neill oh. in it, and basically it's about uh, a woman that is asking her husband for a divorce, and then once she asks for a divorce, she has this increasingly erratic behavior. And that's all I really want to tell you. Go watch this movie because this movie turns on a dime, and it's masterfully done. Even even uh, Roger Ebert called it a cult masterpiece. It really is. Uh, there's there's this one shot where there's a wall, two walls of mirrors, and they somehow hid the camera as it goes around this wall of mirrors. Oh, that'd be very tough. That must it, have been. It, it's insane. It, it's insanely well done. There's this incredible scene where she's having this meltdown in a, in a subway tunnel that you may have seen for advertisements for, I don't know, Shudder or something, and people think it's The Shining, who maybe have never seen The Shining because the scene is never in there, or they think it's Shelley Duvall, and it's, no, it's not. It's not Shelley Duvall. It, uh, it's Isabel Ajani. It's an incredible film. It's not on a lot of people's radar, uh, but go see it. It's an incredible film. The next one I, I want to uh, recommend to you is uh, the Japanese fantasy horror film House. Yes. House. Or House. So good. It is. You've never seen anything like this movie. It stands by itself. It's incredibly special. It's not scary at all. It's too weird to be it's scary. It's too it's weird. Like... It's almost proto-anime in a lot of ways. Yeah. Uh, the way they shoot it, the way the characters act, the way it's written is, a, is very much like an anime. Mm -hmm. And basically, it's, it's like a uh, 70s movie that's a lot like an anime, live action though. And there, it's a group of schoolgirls that go to this uh, to one of their aunt's house, mm -hmm. and it turns out to be a haunted house. And the aunt is like a witch, and 
I, I'm telling you, like, they all have their own little personalities and stuff, and it's amazing the way they introduce it. And it's imaginative in, in filmmaking and what they do with practical effects. And it's... I'm, I'm telling you, if you've never seen it, please see it. And, and you, you will instantly incorporate it into your... Uh, spooky season repertoire. Yeah, it, it will it become uh, it will become like an, uh, a Halloween staple. Yeah, mm. instant classic for you if you've never seen it. So it's, so good, so bizarre. It's absurd. It's bizarre. It's funny, and weirdly, weirdly moving in mm-hmm. a lot of ways. Yeah, because it's about sort of, I mean, a lot like what we talked about. It's a, it's about death and sort of reconciliation with death, and and sort of. How your friends sort of support you through all of that. It's got skeletons. It, it has a dancing skeleton in it, and they they only had enough money to hire like like a band. So there's one song in it that is not the theme song. <laughs> yeah. So they have a band playing one song, and then the rest of the music in the movie is the one theme song that they've transposed mm-hmm. into, like, different genres. Yeah. And, it, like, there's a cat singing mm-hmm. the song at one point. And it is, again, you, you have never seen anything like this. It is incredible. You will believe a house can be haunted. <laughs> <laughs> you will believe a man can fly. Yeah. Yes. Into a haunted house. Into a haunted house. Yeah. Uh, he's not in the movie, but a man... He apparently. could. He could fly. He could. He just. If you can believe to. the things that are happening in that movie, apparently it makes. There's a man that turns into a pile of watermelons in that movie. I thought it was bananas. It is bananas, but the guy has a head. Watermelon head. Uh, there, watermelon's a main thing too. Watermelon's Sounds main pretty thing. bananas. It's very. I thought you were talking about the newest Evangelion movie where Kaji <laughs> turns into a pile of bananas. Also anyway, in house. <laughs> are we done? Anyway, we are the History Boys. Thank you so much for listening. I am Christopher Whedon. I, I, I'm spooked. I'm spooked. Oh, really? My, but I wet my pants. Uh, yeah. Even with all my pee breaks that we cut out, you don't hear them. But yeah, uh, he my, did it on purpose to make us feel uncomfortable. I'm yeah, I wanted you to kind of smell my musk. Yeah, uh, we don't like it. Uh, yeah, it's 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 rough. And yeah. uh, I, I am Tyler Armantrout. Um, you know, I continue to be spooked throughout the entire month. I'm terrified right now. I, I, I cover it up very well behind a facade yep. of uh, kind of just uh, apathy, f- uh, yeah, apathy and uh, f- uh, feigned confidence. But I'm terrified right now. I'm <laughs> nerve wracked. And uh, I'm a history boy. And I am Jerry Nash. Thank you so much for listening. I am also a history boy, of course. We love each and every one of our listeners. And I know all of you really love Spooky Season, and that is why we want to keep it going. is because we know this is your favorite time of the year, as much as as it is ours. So we, we will continue to, to put out an episode uh, every week this month. I hope you keep listening and, and tell everyone around you to, to listen to these spooky episodes. Mm-hmm. Follow us on all the social medias, your Twitter, your Instagram, your Facebook, all mm-hmm. that stuff. Leave us and a five-star review. Yeah, where, wherever you have found us. Uh, you know, I, I, I think it's more prevalent on Apple Podcasts yeah, yes. than anything else. Which on our Patreon. There's also Patreon. If you want to give us a dollar a month or five dollars a month, think about it. That's like buying us... All of us, all four of us, Zach and Absentia, buying all four of us one beer a month is like $5 a month. One yeah. beer a month. And the party doesn't have to stop. You'll get yeah. your shout out. You'll get your access to the Discord where you can chat with us and other fans yeah. of the show. Uh, participate in all kinds of extra cool stuff that we got coming down the pike. And get Indeed. access to... Patreon exclusive content. Indeed, mm-hmm. indeed, and uh, we're all very excited about that. Uh, but but if you if if you don't want to uh, give us five, uh, there's still one dollar a month, and that gives yeah. you the uh, Discord as well. But if you don't want to spend money, give us that review. That really helps us out a lot yeah. as well. Thank you for listening again. Thank you for sticking with us through spooky season. I know this is your favorite time of year. And Tyler, this time I want you to do the thing. Love you, bye. And it's really all the same thing you